what are you looking for to gain with our hour today? So to Can learn we? how uh, call without being shy uh, on the call. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try and log in. I don't know if you have the authentication on. It may Yay, may it's not. not. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay. So tell me about how long you've been in the system and what's the rock in your shoe? What, what, what's, what's happening? Because obviously you're not converting at what you want to convert at. That's why we're here today. So by myself, I am quite new to that. I mean, I am just in the second months of being a realtor and just started start to learn everything. I mean, there is uh, so many different softwares from the trip, from the agent locators and all. So I am still in the learning process and I really didn't uh, do so many calls. I mean, uh, just few and uh, uh, some of them with my cell phone, but now that we have a numbers on agent locator and we can um, call. So I really didn't uh, uh, do a lot, but just a few uh, call that I did uh, was not bad, to be honest, but uh, I needed uh, more uh, guidance. I mean, if I hear, for example, on few calls, how do you do the call and how you start it or so that will give us a lot of uh, startup uh, support. Absolutely. And th let me ask, what, what have you done before real estate? So actually, uh, I mean, uh, I was in an import and sales of uh, small household appliances and kind of my kids told me I have kind of talent because people when calling our office and I pick up and they want to purchase, for example, a $10 brush or so for their steam cleaner. So after I was talking with them, they leave maybe with $200 uh, orders. I mean, so uh, <laughs> and I... I mean, uh, so I'm not shy or so, but it's a new industry. Now I have to understand uh, uh, what subjects I have to touch and how to talk with the people. Uh, and uh, So I have a lot of planning to do with AJ Locator as well. I mean, I am uh, trying also from the telecom uh, system download. Uh, I just uh, did some research and uh, prepared about 200 numbers to download it into the system and then uh, systematically start uh, calling them. And uh, uh, so probably in a week or so, I will start uh, real calling activity. So that's why I think that it's a very good time to us. have this seminar. So, yeah. so you are the upsell man is what I'm hearing. <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> upsell, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and th there is a difference and I always like to ask to know where you come from because what we've done previously really sets a tone for how we think about the task at hand when we see leads and a big piece of calling leads is what are we telling ourselves because we all have a story and we all love to assume and we can't help ourselves it's just what we do. So learning that you come from an industry of sales, it was a little bit different because it sounds like they were calling you. Were you doing any outbound calls to find business or were they coming to you? Yeah, it's they calling to me. Yes, you are right. So yeah. I uh, normally didn't call them. Once I got the call, then I leave a, they leave a message and I call them back. Uh, so you're right. So mainly the first uh, action is from them. But here is also the same case. They go and uh, they'll fill out the request or, I mean, it's uh, different than the numbers that I get from list and download it. And then I go and want to call them. But what we catch from uh, agent locators through the ad and uh, we got it, they initiate the call. Yes. So kind, kind of similar, I believe then, yeah? Yeah, it is. And it's learning, right? Because every phone call, and, and I when I jumped on, I heard you all talking about scripts. And we have to remember, there's a lot more situations with people and making a move than there is people making a decision to buy an appliance. 
-hmm. So there are, and let me see. Well, I, I just pulled in your site um, collectively in not set new leader tried to contact that we either haven't confirmed a phone number, they have a valid phone number, there's 448 leads that are showing that have never been spoke to. So when I look at that 448 number, there's 448 different stories, different reasons, different issues, different expectations. So if we just look at it as all our job is, is to find out what are their expectations and where are they in the process? And what are their, I mean, what, like, what are their expectations? So if, if we take away all of the noise of trying to figure out what to say and what to do and who to call and when to do it and da, 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 and just do it. All, all the objective is, is find out where they're in the process and where do you fit in? It's really, truly that easy, but we love to overcomplicate it because nothing can be that easy. So what I've done, because I way overcomplicated it when I started doing this years ago, because I had to figure it out. I had to study the lead, look at what they were looking at, really get an idea of how they got on this. Like I would look at every single note, every single property and try and figure it out before I called them. And then I wasted 10 minutes and then they didn't even answer the phone. But I felt that's what I needed to do to be prepared. And, and I heard you say that, like, I need to learn what I need to have a dialogue about with them. You know more than they do. They just want to know what's on the market. They just want to know what the expectations are in the market. Three bedrooms, two baths, price range, right? You don't need to know anything. All you need to know is to ask them, so what are you looking for? When do you plan on making a move? That's it. So we just don't overthink it. Okay, webinar done, right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> so what I had to do to get my logic and headspace out of the way, because it was costing me time. When I built filters, it allowed me to not think about that one lead that has looked at 500 properties every single day that won't ever return my phone call. Because it's so easy to get caught up on a few of the people in the database that really pull your attention. And then all we're thinking about is, are those three people that are never returning our phone call, never answering the phone, never responding to text messages, but they're active every day. That's energy that I don't have time to exhaust. I just want to know who should I be calling and where are they in the priority of if I have time to sit down and make my phone calls, obviously, if we have time to sit down and make phone calls, we want an outcome. We want something to be able to say it was worth our time to sit down and make the phone calls. So prioritizing our leads is what led me to really organize the database because I wanted to be able to sit down, do what I wanted to do, 10 minutes here, 30 minutes here, 20 minutes here, hour here, and not have to spend all my time working my database. Well, it starts one at a time. It starts with the new lead that comes in. There's only two things that happen. Well, I'm sorry, three. They have a bad phone number. We can't ever call them again or text them. They're only on email campaign. We have a conversation, we don't have a conversation. That's it. So when a new lead comes in, we have that determination. I've never talked to you. I talked to you, now where do I, what do I do with you? You have a bad phone number, you're going on a bad phone number campaign. So as long as we're taking care of our housekeeping with the very first attempt, everything else is gonna take care of itself. And what does that everything else look like? Well, when you look at priorities, when a lead registers, we wanna know why they registered because they may be wanting to buy a house tomorrow. They may be wanting to buy a house next week. So the objective and the priority of the newer leads are much higher, right? 
I want to, I, I want to make as many attempts to you as possible in those first couple of weeks, because I want to know why you logged in. So in that first two weeks, you have a filter set up for new leads, brand new. All right. You just came in. I never talked to you. Then I tried to contact you. So I'm moving you to try to contact. So we basically have four different statuses in our database to identify the priority of our leads. We have the new ones. We have tried to contact. Tried to contact, when we pull that whole list up, we know that we've never had a conversation with them and all, all our job is, is find out where they are in the process. There's three ways of finding out where they are in the process. Phone, text, email. What is their preferred communication? We don't know. The beautiful thing about agent locators, we can set them up on an automated campaign that all we have to do is attempt the phone call. The texting's going out, the emailing's going out. If they're not responding to that, the phone calls need to go out. So in that first two weeks, the goal is six to eight phone attempts. So if you have everybody in a filter that you've never spoke to that registered in the last 14 days, we just call those people. We don't have to pay attention to the names. We don't have to pay attention to what they're looking at. We don't have to pay attention to anything other than, whoop, I called those 20 people. They're off my list. Next. So it takes the whole thought process out of it. Now the question is, new lead answers the phone. What is the best way to engage them and keep them in a conversation. And hopefully they don't hang up on us. The number one rule is drop their defense because we have to remember they're looking at their phone at a number that they don't know. If they choose to answer it, they're answering it, expecting to be sold to. I mean, what, what do you think whenever you see a number pop on your phone and you don't know it? Is that, is that your first thought? Oh, somebody's selling me something. <laughs> mm. Or, or is a tax collector collecting taxes, right? Delinquent bill. But basically it's, I, I'm going to get sold to that. That's our first thought that that's why people don't answer their phone because there's so many spam calls and there's so many robocalls, right? They don't want sold to. So we have seconds in order to penetrate that wall to help them decide to stay on the phone with us. How do we do that? A very quick intro because they don't care who you are. They don't care what website you're with. They don't care what company you're with. And they certainly don't care how many accolades you've had in your business. And they really don't even care if you've never sold a house or you're only two months into being a real estate agent. They don't care. So the very quick intro is, hey, Mohammed, this is Beverly. I saw you were online looking at homes in Toronto. I don't know where you are. That's it. You're calling them on exactly the action they took. They're like, oh, yeah. So the next thing after we get past that is what we're you looking for. What is your current situation? Asking the question. Because their response is what's going to lead us to the next question. And Mohammed, what, what are you recognizing that you get the most? And feel free, people, to pop in the chat. What is the most common line that you get? when you're making these phone calls and you, and you introduce yourself and you ask them what they're looking for? Well, when I call some of them, yeah. they say, I'm sold it, I moved to a new place. So no interest, right? So are you calling older leads? Yeah, yeah. that's what we get. <laughs> okay. okay, good, good, good. And some of them you call, they say, oh, I'm not selling anymore or I'm not in the market right now. And some of them what say, is oh. your intro? When they answer the phone, what, 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 what is your line that you say? Mostly I tell them like, uh, you are on our website. We have emailed you, I guess, uh, how many times, whatever we look at it, like 
other people who are with the, in our group send it to them. So and call me. I'm an old lead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Put you Let's on the see. spot. Oh, I just say the. Call me. Ring, ring. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> okay. And use your name then. My name's okay. Beverly. All yeah, right. use my name. Okay. Hi, Beverly. This is Angie from Gary Anderson team. And I've seen, uh, I'm looking at, I've, uh, oh my God, I can't say it now. <laughs> I, I just hung up on you. <laughs> mm, I know. <laughs> Let's I hear some of your. This. this is why you're here. This is, this is real life. This yes. is real life, right? It, it's like we freeze whenever they're like, oh my God, they pick, like, we sit yeah. down for people to pick up the phone. They pick up the phone and we're like, oh my God, they picked up the phone. What do I say? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So let me ring, ring you. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Sanjeev. Hi. Hey, this is Beverly. Hey, just on a quick call. At one point you were online looking at some homes and I'm just wondering, did you ever find one or are you possibly still in the market? I'm still looking, but I haven't found anything I like. Now, have you been out looking in homes or have you just been kind of poking around online? I'm looking online for now because Perfect. I have no uh, time to go to view it. But understand uh, now. So as far as looking online and you said, you know, you're still looking, what, what are your plans? Do you own your home now? Yeah, I own my home. Yeah. And the reason for the move, are you looking to get something bigger or smaller? I'm thinking people? about uh, bigger and more closer to my spouse's uh, work area. Okay. So. And as far as if I had a crystal ball and everything was aligned with timing, when would you like to be in a new home? About three to six months. Okay. That's a fair time. And how long have you been in your home? 21 years. Oh, so you have some sweet equity? Oh, yeah, lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sanjeev, let me just ask you, while you're online looking, in regards to knowing what dollar amount you would walk away with on your home, um, would it be helpful to know what that dollar, on, on what a buyer would pay for your home in today's market? Yeah, I would like to have uh, someone to give me some sort of home evaluation and uh, this way, at least I don't know how much I'm getting and how much uh, I have to put in from my pocket. As you know, yeah. the market's Fantastic. pretty hard these days. Sanjeev, I would love to see your home. Absolutely no obligation, but I would just love to meet you and, and offer you those numbers and just kind of see where it goes from there. Yeah, sure. Why not? You have my email address. You can send me some details. I do, but better than that, when are your, you and your spouse together that would be a good time for me to come see your home? Oh, I have to find out and I will let you know. You will. All right. So that's what everybody says. And my job, Sanjeev, is to meet your expectations to earn your business. What can I do in the meantime, while you're talking to your spouse, what can I do in the meantime to ensure that we can make this meeting happen for you? I guess the get me something which we both like and the area and the price, because these days uh, I'm looking at the prices they're going over asking. Yes, agreed. Well, and that's why I think it's very important for you to know the numbers that you're working with so yeah. that we can make those decisions. This is a big investment moving forward. And I want to be able to help you with that decision to look at the numbers on paper and make sure that it is the right time for you all to be making this move. Yeah. So as far as coming to see your home, when can we make that happen? Uh, about in a week or so, let me communicate with the spouse because okay. when you're coming down, you want uh, us to be here, right? So Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if I call you back next Wednesday and you might not answer the phone because you know you're busy or you might just be blowing me off. How do you want me to um, communicate with you if you don't answer the phone? Can I send you a text? Yeah, you can send me a text and email. You got it. And, and by the way, what is your address, Sanjeev? I'm at uh, 100 Randstrom Gardens. 
Fantastic. I'll do some preliminary homework and um, I will talk to you next Wednesday. Don't dodge Perfect. my call, Sanjeev. <laughs> Hello, I didn't hear. Sorry. I said, don't dodge my call when I call you next Wednesday. Oh, no problem. No problem. It's a pleasure <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> All right, so I have to ask you because I interjected, right? I basically called you that uh, yeah. on the point that you're not going to take my call. How did that feel when I was? Did you feel like what a bitch, or were you like, oh, that's kind of cool? Like she totally. That's cool, yeah, like very friendly person, you know, not pushy. Just keep asking uh, when, you know. Do you have kids, Sanjeev? Yes, I have one boy. How old is he? It's twenty. And when he was like four or five years old, what did he always ask for? Like repeatedly? <laughs> um, didn't spend too much time with him, but I was traveling too much. I mean, mm. I'm a businessman, so travel too much. Yeah, but we know those children, they're like, daddy, can we go here? Daddy, can we go there? Daddy, is it time yet? Daddy, can we go? You're like, oh, for flip's sakes. Yes, let's go. <laughs> right? So- yeah. The approach is very nonchalant. I don't want anything from you. I'm just trying to get information out of you to see, is there anything that I can do to help you? Mm -hmm. Was that a helpful conversation? Yes. Awesome. No, but my question is like, say I call somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said they have sold the house. Now they moved to a new place. So that lease is off right we cannot keep calling the guy person <laughs> because they but you can tell them uh, if you need anything you can connect with me or con contact our team right so ring ring no you yeah ring ring so i want you to be that lead i want you to be that conversation okay okay ring ring hello hey sanjeev how are you Hey, I'm great. This is Beverly. Just want a quick check in, Sanjeev. I saw that you had been online at one point looking at some homes and just wondering if you ever found anything or if you're still in the market. No, I'm not in the market because I sold the house and I moved to Cambridge. I'm not looking to sell my house anymore. Oh, fantastic. How long ago did you, did you buy your home in Cambridge? About three months ago. Good for you. Everything went okay and you love your home? Yes, I love it. And I don't think I'll move again. <laughs> I know it's not fun making a move, is it? <laughs> yeah. How was your experience? Did you buy it on your own? Did you work with an agent? Oh, I, I had the agent uh, communicated with me, a few agent, but one came to me and oh. uh, he showed us his services and we liked his proposal and we went ahead so he sold our house and he helped us to buy another house wonderful so on a scale of one to ten what what would you give him on service oh about eight eight what would have made it a ten? Oh, the closing was an issue mm. and and what happened so I, I'm not going to finish this, but you see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. I look at everybody as a flipping science experiment because I want to be better. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. I find out from him what issues he had, I know what not to do. That's why I brought it up. Like I, she didn't tell me anything like that, but you know, <laughs> I thought yeah. let me and, put but some they will. scenarios. Yeah. But they will. And that's why I said you never know what scenarios are going to come up. I mean, I, I got, I'm, I'm looking at 440 new people here that we didn't have talked to that have a different scenario. Yeah. It's just having those questions. And my motto is question everything. Mm -hmm. When someone says something, if you don't know what to say, just say, tell me more about that. Yeah. How did that work for you? How, it, what was your experience like? Mm -hmm. And that's what always helps me with new content. That's what helps me train my team mm -hmm. because we are only selling so many homes. Yes. But if I'm talking to somebody that didn't even utilize our services, now I have a story. Yep. When I call a lead and they're like, I have an agent and say, oh my gosh, I just have to sleep tonight. I just had a conversation with a gentleman that he, um, 
he utilized someone else's services and he bought three months ago and he was not happy because this is what happened. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure you're protected. So every conversation that we have, we might not have the conversion, but man, what are we going to learn from that conversation? How, how about asking him if uh, they may know somebody in neighborhood or family or relatives or friends uh, who may need uh, services? Is it a time point, uh, good time point to ask? Absolutely. We... Well, if, when he says an eight, you, you could have very easily had said, well, let me just ask you. And I always start off my conversations with, let me just ask you. Do you mind if I ask you? Because then you're asking for permission. So let me just ask you real quick, Muhammad, you gave him an eight. If you knew of a friend or family member that was going to be selling their home or making a purchase, would you refer them or would you be open to referring me? And I, I would love the opportunity to earn business. The worst he can say is no. We didn't lose anything because we didn't have anything in the first place. But we forget that right? We forget that we didn't have it. So we feel like we lost it. We feel like we blew the conversation, which I come from a space that if you're meant to work with somebody, you, you can't screw it up, right? We attract the people that we're meant to be working with. So why I always say you want to have your mindset right when you're calling leads, because you don't want to attract the wrong people. <laughs> so this is why I love role-playing because you know, you're never going to get the appointment. And it doesn't matter what you say. And it okay. really does help you be a little bit more aggressive with your language. And what happens is you start to get comfortable saying things that are normally uncomfortable. So when you're calling leads live for real, you're like, oh my God, I just said that out loud. I didn't die. I'm still alive. And oh my God, they answered it. So we just have to be able to put our leads at the same level as we are, not look at ourselves as telemarketers, not looking at ourselves as a, a salesperson trying to get something, but just having a conversation and finding out where they are in the process and what happened. Now, to the point of that conversation, Sanjeev was really in a talkative mood. I was able to keep asking questions and keep the conversation going. So it's very important for us to listen to how they're receptive to our conversation on the other end. If he would have been really short, I wouldn't have pushed the envelope as far as I did. I, I would have literally just have said, okay, great. Glad you found a home. I would have put him into the database. I would have moved him to a contacted stage and I would have tagged them as already purchased. Mm -hmm. So remember when we talked about the leads coming in, we have those decisions to make, right? There's only three things that happen. We have a bad phone number, we have a conversation or we don't. When we have a conversation, what are we doing with that lead so that we know what the outcome was and what has to happen next? So if we use a tagging system to be able to identify without having to open up the profile, then we're organizing our database. So all those people that we talk to that have already purchased, we're building up a group of people that already purchased. So if we want to do a marketing campaign, we can mass market to those people that have already purchased. So when I have conversations, I think about my tags and that helps me to ask the questions so I know where to put them. And I think about, okay, if I was, if I was gonna do a mass email and it stated, last time we talked, I know you've already purchased, but does it make sense to put that tag on them if I were to send that email out? Now, if Sanjeev would have said, yeah, I, I purchased three months ago. I'm happy. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Move on next. Right. So you really want to pick up on the energy 
that they are emitting on the phone. And if they're, if they're friendly, go with it. If they're not, it's okay. Get next, next, next. So That's when good. I you ask the question, that's good. Like you can ask, uh, how was it? How was your move and all that? That's good. It shows yeah. that you care about them, you know? You're not selling something. Yeah, it's true. Because you never know what's going to happen in a year, two, three, four, five years. It's true, yeah. You don't know. And the statistics, I don't know percentages. I don't want to throw percentages out there. I know it's very, very high percentage that people don't reuse the same agent. Yeah. And the chances of that agent continuing communication with them is very slim. It's true. Very slim. So that's why like when Muhammad asked, you know, is this a good time to ask for, for yes, absolutely. But and how have... shall we, shall we uh, continue with that case? Uh, send them once every month an email only or no more ask call them. for a year, two year or? I like uh, to ask. I always like to ask them, is there any information that would be helpful for you? Do you care about what's going on with the market to keep up with, with the market trends? Yeah, great. Would you like to receive a monthly report on what's happening with the market so that you can watch your equity increase? Yep, great. Mm -hmm. I have one question, uh, Beverly. I have worked yeah. with uh, Muhammad and and, Ger and uh, Sanjeev as well. Um, my name is Rishi. And my problem is when I call through my cell phone, I'm not able to call them. So I'm through your agent locator site. Okay. So, so I have to call them directly through my cell phone without your site. Is there any glitch or something wrong? That it has be to be corrected question. now. I yeah, there, you should be able to make calls. Uh, what's happening when you're making calls, Rishi? Uh, it's not going through. It just disconnects right away. It's not even without even a single ring. Okay. Uh, Richie, when did you try it last time? Because this issue about last week. Uh, last last week? week. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So still, it's not, uh, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Text is working. Um, but not the phone calls. Oh. We had this issue before, right? Muhammad and Sanjeev, we all had it. And then yes. This issue is solved with me. I mean, I can call and everything will be recorded can, and everything is uh, okay. good. Can somebody look at my profile as well? Yeah, like I can have our, uh, what I'll do is I'll have our support team look into your account because um, it should, and I'm not sure why it's just disconnecting. It could be you might want to clear your cache. There might have been an error and they fixed it, but your system is still caching the error. Uh, so it keeps giving you a problem. So you can try one thing that you can try um, okay. as a click test is to right. open up your CRM in an incognito window. Okay. Um, and then, because then that's not cash. So, in try making a call that way. Sometimes, if it's a hard, if every call is doing that, then oh, no, only only through cell phone. Um, yeah, the laptop is fine. Oh, so it's just when you make a call using your phone through and trying to use the CRM. Yeah. Oh, well, that's oh, interesting. That's I never tried. I always call through the computer. Maybe when I call through my cell phone, it's the same case. I don't know. It's, yeah, so if, if you try, it should work through your cell phone. Um, you can try again, opening up the browser on your cell phone in a, in a private window and seeing if okay. it makes a difference. Yeah. Okay, I will try it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, no there was one more question for Beverly. Is when, they, when we call it, most of the time it's happening with me, they don't even want to talk. Oh, I'm driving, call me later on. <laughs> uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then I message them and they never respond even the message. Phone calls, no receive, nothing. What yeah. do we do then? Rishi, call me. I'm a, I'm a lead. I, I just want to hear what your intro is. <laughs> okay, ring, ring. no worries. <laughs> Don't <the> spot, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no problem. Hey, Beverly, my name is Rishi Kapoor, and I'm calling uh, from um, Gary Anderson Realty. And I'm, I was seeing that you were on our website and uh, checking out some houses uh, two days back. Uh, I yep. was wondering if I can help you in some way. And I was looking at you, looking at the houses for townhomes in Mississauga area. Uh, 
how can I help you with that? And um, they will just call me back tonight. Will, yeah, that's what they'll say. Call me back tonight. Call me back tomorrow. <laughs> call, I'm on the road. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so constructive criticism. It was, I didn't time it, but it was a very long intro. And okay. I just, I, I needed to be able to interject. Um, and so that's what, when I first opened up the call here or our webinar, we only have seconds to be able to help them determine if they want to hang up on us or talk to us. Right. And they don't care who you are. They, they don't care about anything other than, hey, Rishi. So you answer the phone, Rishi. Yeah. This is Beverly. Just want a quick check in. I saw you were online looking at homes in Mississauga. Okay. So you were very fast, basically. Give it back to Where them. Let them talk. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Give it back to okay. them and let them talk because all they're not hearing a word that you're saying. They're mm -hmm. trying to figure out who the hell you are and why you're calling. Yes. So they're okay. not listening. And that honestly, the more we talk, it's, it's that nervousness of if I just keep talking, they're going to keep engaged and then I can get them. It's just a natural tendency that we all do. So okay. it's, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that natural tendency that if we keep talking, we're going we're, we're gonna to engage because okay. deep down, we're afraid of what they're going to say in return. And I can only say yeah. that because I know, right? That I, I've been calling leads since 2008. I saw the same fear. Like, I, what are they going to say? They're going to hang up on me. It still goes through my mind. It never stops. I always have that thought in my mind, right. but it's, it's just being able to execute on it and just trusting the process. Okay. okay. Uh, Get to the point. So, so make it short and sweet. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then the other thing that I do, Rishi, if they're adamant that I'm driving or I'm in a meeting or I, I've got yeah. before I'm at a funeral. I like I've, I've legit got that one a couple of times. <laughs> I say real quick, I don't need to call you back. I just want to know if you are planning on buying a home this year. Oh, then it. that way you're determining if they're like, nope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Not looking yeah. right. Tag them, move them to contacted. No, tag them. Not being. This is a thing like those orders. But if they say yeah, I just say what's your time frame? I just want to know when I can touch base with you, and just ask them when can I call you back. Okay. And don't give up. Consistency is the theme. Consistency is what wins. No, but sometimes say you, they say they want to sell it, and then they say, oh, you know what we were explaining. But now we decided we're going to stay together. We're not selling it. <laughs> yeah, and it happens, right? Yeah. In, in so, real life, though, think about every move that you've made personally. Yeah. And there are moves that I don't care what the agent would have said to me. It would not have changed my time frame. Yes. It would true. not have changed my mind. Mm -hmm. But because we're human... And we want to people please, and we want to make a sale. We freaking take it personally. Yeah, it's true. And that's where we have to be quick to stop taking it personally and going, oh my God, I lost that freaking money. I'm just done calling leads. And then we stop. Mm. So that consistency and that not thinking about what just happened, but think about the conversations that we're going to have. The next. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I look back. I got my license in 2005 oh, wow. and some of those people that I sold homes to back then, I created really great friendships, yes. going to their weddings, going to the baby showers, right? You yep, never yep. know who that next person's going to be and what they're going to mean in your life. True. And if we think about calling leads from it and, and really start enjoying the process and enjoying the conversations, it puts a completely different twist on why we're doing what we're doing. Because we're actually in the database building business. We just happen to sell real estate. We just happen to have a product that pays really well if we collaborate. That's it. Now, Beverly, if we call somebody just randomly when I pick up the name from the tele list and I put it in my data bank and uh, 
We don't know them. They never request. Just we want to see if there is a potential there. How shall we start the first 10 second or 20 so second in the call? Explain to me what the, did you say that, did you use a firm like Telebunk or something bunk? So, no, there is, a, there is a data bank uh, that our uh, brokerage can uh, give it to us that uh, give us the numbers that we allowed to call because in Canada, I mean, uh, you know that you cannot call every house uh, when they are in a do not call list, but there are numbers uh, in there that is uh, in the call list. So, so if how I, did they get into the call list? Do you know that? No, this is a general phone book, uh, like a Canada phone book, but uh, those people in the, some people in the Canada phone book uh, said, we don't want to be called. And as a realtor, we are not allowed to call them. Gotcha. But those which are in the, let's say green uh, uh, list, uh, which we can see them, we are allowed to call. For example, the, uh, one way is that we see in one street a house is sold and then we pick up 10 house in that street uh, we can pick up in the system we put the street okay. names like and we find 10 house yes and then we will call them but uh, when they pick up the phone what is the first 10 second uh, i mean uh, what shall i uh, shall we say in the 10 second to see if there could be a potential for future or not Hey, Mohammed. Yes. This is Shall Beverly. I? Hey, I'm just doing some neighborhood courtesy calls and I noticed that 123 Main Street just sold. Did, did you have any idea what, what that home sold for? Huh. Okay, okay. Right? Something, yeah. How long have you been in your home? Do you have any plans on making a move? Nope. Well, let me just ask you. If you needed to get advice from a real estate agent, do you have a go-to person? No. What could I do to be that go-to person? And then ask them if they have interest in keeping up with the market. And then, so I know Jeff had asked, no, wait, hang on. Let me see who asked it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Jeff had asked us about setting someone up on a campaign and maybe calling them in six months or calling them in a year or whatever. You could put them on a campaign and just ask them, say, if I were to follow up with you in the future, just to check in. Six months, a year, when can I just give you a call? You will be amazed at what people say. Well, you can call me next month. And this is where it's really good practice to have landscapers in your back pocket, snow removers in your back pocket, whatever it is that anybody would need for home maintenance. So is there anything really yeah, that we can help you? Yeah. Yes. And ask people, is there anything, uh, is there anything in your house that you're working on? Is there any projects that you're getting ready to take on in your home? Could I help connect you with some really great contractors, with some really great plumbers, with some really great blah, blah, blah. Good. So take that opportunity if they're not going to be moving or selling. Is there, any, is there any projects that you're thinking about taking on to improve your home? Because what's a big problem that people have? This happened to me. When they think about making a move, but they decide not to move and they invest into their own home with renovations, additions. I like to talk to people before they actually stroke the check to build the addition because potentially they could be out numbering or out what, what number, I don't even know what word I want right now. They could be putting themselves out of the market on what they're investing into their home. So what happened to us, we had a 300, well, we had probably a $280,000 house. We put a $50,000 addition on. And we have put it on the market in five, like literally we wrote the, the check for the last payment and our home went on the market the next month because our situation did not change. We had a beautiful addition. I loved it. And I thought that if I loved my home enough that 
I would be able to justify the commute to my kid's school. It didn't fix the problem. So a lot of times when people are in their inertia, they think they're doing the right things because they've made logical sense of it, but are they putting too much money into their home that they'll never get it back out again? Our job is to give people enough information to make educated decisions with their future. So if we look at every conversation as what, how can I help you? What education can I give you? What information can I give you to be able to help you with decisions? So in a circle prospecting, it is huge to know what, what they're planning on doing with their home. And so, you know, before you put a lot of money into your house, would it be helpful? And go back to, to the role play I did with Sanjeev, right? Would it be helpful for you to at least know your numbers before you make that financial investment? Because there's a lot of people that think about moving, but they just don't want to think about it to the point that they have to take action. And numbers never lie. And that, that's why I kind of took it away from Sanjeev and said, you know, he, he was giving me resistance. Like I talked to my spouse, like I talked to my spouse. Mm -hmm. well, and I said, what can I do to earn your business? Well, find me a home. Well, we need to know the numbers before we find you a home. So if we're focused on getting the details into their hands, you can never replace a face-to-face. -face. Even if they're not utilizing your business, think about community, think about the bigger picture, thinking about you're going to be in business in one, two, three, four, five years. Most people are on a five to seven year plan of moving, unless it's their toe tag home. So it depends on your audience. Is that helpful? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah. So Jeff, I think I kind of answered your question too, as far as I always ask people like, what, what can I do for you? Like when you have that conversation, they've already, and they, they've already bought a home or they've already sold and you're not going to be able to convert them. Just ask them what you can do. Um, and if you can follow up. So I always like to know the source. So you, 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 caught me asking like, where did they come from? How is a lead there? I, I, I did a training one time on the anatomy of a lead because again, when we go back to those seconds that we have in that initial introduction, we need to think about getting to the point very quick and identifying why we rang their phone. So if we're identifying with why we rang their phone, it, it kind of solidifies the phone call a little bit. So if we know where the lead came from, or if we know the intention of what we're calling, if we're calling a FISBO, if a sale by owner, right? Or expired or circle prospecting, we slightly change that intro to exactly identify why we're calling that lead. Just so we can drop that resistance but they will taste, they will taste if your intention is selling, they, they, they will test it. They, they, they will know it and they will hang up on you. And then you just get old biddies and then you just get miserable people and they, they just hang up on you anyway. So funny story. I had a lady, I called and I said, and it was, it was a gentleman's name. And I, this is where I learned my own objections she answers the phone and, I, and I'm like, I'm, I'm looking for Bob. And she goes, why are you looking for Bob? I said, well, he logged into our site and he was looking at some homes and da, da, da. She said, that was my husband. He died two years ago. I surely don't think he was online looking at homes. And I says, ma'am, no disrespect, but were you online looking at homes? And did you use his name? <laughs> you can't make that up. So what I learned was when I make phone calls the very first time, I let it go the whole way to a voicemail to identify if there's a name on it. And if there is a name on it, I will. So I, I'm elated the first time they don't answer. Cause I'm like, woohoo, now I got a name unless it's, I cannot believe how many people have automated messages. And please, if you are a real estate agent listening to this right now and you have an automated message, put your name on it. <laughs> But yeah, it, it blows my mind how many people have automated voicemails that don't have a name to identify with it. 
So I make that note. So in Agent Locator, you can kind of pin that note right under the info and then just put on there, okay, it's Susie that was looking at homes, but it was Bob's voicemail. So when you call back, you can identify with Bob. Say, hey, Bob, I was just wondering, do you, it looks like Susie was online. Looking, oh yeah, that was my sister. Oh yeah, that was my wife. And now you've just made a connection. But if you call and say, Susie, I was looking for Susie. Mm. I'm not Susie. And then we hang up without identifying that it was a family member. Because a lot of times husbands go in and put the wife's information in. Wife's, I mean, people do it all the time to their family. So that was just a little extra credit there to identify with names. And even... In the detail, we see people logging in with their first initial or an abbreviation or maybe even a blank, whatever. If you look at the email address, a lot of times their name is in their email address. Go up and change it because when they're getting emails from the system, it's identifying as, hey, first name. So if their name is Karen and they logged in as a capital K, you can go ahead and change it to Karen. So it's gonna say, hey, Karen. It's very subliminal, but when people get emails with their name on it, it's more personal to them and they don't even realize what happened. Because if they come in your site with a K, they're going in everybody's site with a K. And because you change it to Karen, they feel a more personal connection to you without even realizing it. That's true. So yeah. I always say the attention is in the detail, always. And even look for typos in the email. A lot of times they typo their email and say it's Karen. So her name's Karen. Um, and I, I'm just going to use Mauricio's name as a last name <laughs> because you could very easily mistype, right? A, U, R, the R could be a T. But if you see the name and you look at the email address and it says it's wrong, change the C or change the T back to a C. I've caught that, I don't know how many times, just changing, you know, people do dot con, C O N, because M and N are right beside each other on the yeah. keyboard. It was already a bad email address. You can't mess it up. <laughs> if you change it and it's still bad, it's okay. You don't lose anything. But I love even those little wins because I, I make my little note. I change the typo in the email from this to this. And then I, I make sure the home search goes out. And then when they follow my call back, I'm like, yes, they logged in. Win. So definitely attention to detail. And you can do that while the phone's ringing, right? Because when you click the call, it brings up the screen. And then you can be looking at the name, looking at the email, and you can be doing kind of your housekeeping while the phone's ringing. So the goal is 23 seconds a dial. Mm. You will get through many more phone calls and you will create people calling you back because they can't help it. Who just called me and I missed the call? I have to know. So they call back. Have you ever, have you all ha ever had any callbacks? No. no. Yeah, they see your phone number, they call you back and then you tell them that uh, we called them for that. They say, no, we're not looking, it was wrong. Somebody put the wrong number and not stuff like that. Yeah, so ju just wing it, right? Because they'll call back, they say one of two things. I just missed a call from this number or you just tried to call me and I missed it. Yeah. And say, oh yeah, we've been making some phone calls. You must have been looking at homes in da 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 and just use your general area mm -hmm. and then just go with it from there. But I, I love old leads. They're my favorite because they actually answer the phone more than the new leads because they're not getting blown up. You can have many more conversations and there's gold because the, the average seasoning time for leads is like seven years. Okay. Seven years. Seven years. I did a buyer um, presentation with a buyer back in 2014. He called and wanted to see a property that I did a listing presentation on and I did not take the listing. 
he was overpriced and it was a shit box and I didn't, I didn't want it. So he called, he wanted to see this house. And I said, what is it about this home that, that makes you want to see it? And he says, it's in the perfect location. I said, let me ask you, are you looking for a fixer upper? Are you, lo are you looking for a move in raise? I want to move in ready. I said, I cannot discuss details with you because technically I would represent the seller. Mm. Would you be willing to come in and talk to me? Because I would love to find out what it is you're looking for so that we don't waste your time. And he says, I see how you work. You just want my business. I says, no, sir. I said, let me ask you this question. When you're sick, do you call the pharmacist and tell them what drugs you need? Mm -hmm. Or do you call the doctor to find out what the problem is? He says, I call the doctor. I says, well, then why, why do you want to go right to the prescription? I said, there's things about that home that I really want to share with you, but I can't because our lovely state says that we can't, but I would love to help you. He lived literally right around the corner from my office. He was in my office within the next hour. And that was 2014. There were no homes on the market. It was low inventory. So what we did, this is a little bonus for you all. We started looking for off market properties. They were looking for a small rambler, three bedroom, two bath in a certain price range. So we went back in time. This was 2014. So we went back into like 2009 back when our market was really low and we knew people had a crap ton of equity. And we started contacting people from 2009. We did mailers, we called people that we had phone numbers for and we were trying to find them an off market property. They decided not to make a move. It is now 2020, last year, my buyer agent sold them a home. Mm. That was what, 2014 and 2009, five years later. No conversations ever a waste of time. It's just, what do we do with it afterwards? And how much information can we get with them, get from them out of that phone call? And just remember this, I'm going to leave you all with this line. We always want to ask, what can we do to earn your business? What can I do to earn your business? Because that's in essence, your complete intention is to earn your business. And they will never ever hear that from anybody else because everybody else is just too busy trying to convert and get them in a car or get a sign in their yard. So we are at time and my awesome. hopes are, as we started this, I wanted you to be able to go, oh my God, that was so worth my time. <laughs> It was good. Good. The role playing I know helps a lot of people kind of be in that that position and understanding what they could be saying differently or how to approach a conversation. Not yes. a too long conversation. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Fantastic. It has been a pleasure, and I know we did not get into your dashboards. If you want to get on another call, um, my suggestion is start making your phone calls because I'm not seeing calls. I, I'm seeing a bunch of zeros and NAs on the call. Or you're not logging them one or the other. Yes. I'll log them. Yes. So just be sure that you're making those phone calls and you're maintaining the consistency because these leads are never gonna do business with you because of loyalty. They're only doing business out of convenience. And the more you're calling your leads and the more consistent you are, the more you're positioning yourself to be that lucky one that's at that convenient time. But Beverly, if the email, phone are wrong, but you're seeing them, they're looking at the properties, but no response from them, right? So what yeah, do we if, do? <laughs> if, if, if the phone number's bad and the email's bad, they go into the garbage. I yeah. have no way of communicating with them. They're the trying to look at lists. So sometimes what happens is like they come back to the website. It's prompting them. It'll trigger that they're active because they tried to look at the listing, but if the system's going to stop them from looking at the listing. So same goes if they have a, a good email, but the bad phone number and you're seeing that it's showing that they're active, like they looked at a listing, just 
trust that they didn't actually get to look at that listing. The system blocked them from looking at the listing, but it's capturing because they clicked on it, it's capturing that they essentially clicked to try to look at that listing. Um, so some, some leads you'll notice that they, they keep trying every single day and they're getting an email, but it keeps blocking them. Some of them will eventually give you a good number. Others just can't be bothered. Okay. Make sure the game. Yep. Yep, and, and remember just where is your time best spent? Yes. Right, and, and in my opinion, when, when I go into a dashboard to clean it up, I love dashboards that are like 800-ish leads because I know exactly how much time it's gonna take me. I go in and automatically pull all the leads that are new, tried to contact, um, yeah, new, hang on one second, new, I lost my mouse. Yeah, not set, the newly tried to contact. yeah, not set new lead and tried to contact. I pull all of those. And then I just start going by registration date. I'll, I'll do 25 of the newest leads and 25 of the oldest leads. oldest leads. And then I just go back and forth until I get that list done. So I'm, I'm moving them the contacted or they're staying and tried to contact. And what's going to happen if I'm looking at 448 leads right now, I call 50, I'm probably going to get 15 of them are going to be bad phone numbers. So mm -hmm. out of the four, because I, I, I get geeked out on numbers. I'm like 448 people. All right. I want to get this down to zero. Well, it's impossible to get to zero, mm -hmm. right? But process of elimination, 25 here, 25 there, we're moving the bad phone number, we're moving the contacted, we're tagging them, we're setting reminders. Just get through the entire list one time through. And then that 448 is going to be down to about 249. And then start over again. It's, it's, it's so at 23 seconds, you can get through a hell of a lot of leads. And then you're going to create callbacks and your dashboard's going to be clean. So there's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> And now you know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. My pleasure. Thank you for your time and everyone's time. Awesome. awesome. Happy New Year to you all, and I'll see you in two weeks. Perfect. Sounds great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.